Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a cemetery. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. Right here, you can see I have some of the entrance going. In case you haven't noticed, this is very inspired by a certain game that had a very nice cemetery level, so pretty much what you want to do is start off with some pale leaves here. Of course, at the time of recording, this is going to be late October, I mean this is the 28th when I'm recording it, so I'd personally say if you don't have any other options, use mangrove roots. But hopefully the pale garden will be coming and you'll be able to use pale leaves. If you don't want to use mangrove roots, then use spruce. Underneath here, there is some pale moss. And then the middle is deep slate. It's up to you on whether you want to texture it. Personally, I'd say yes. Maybe use some cobbled deep slate stairs, something like this. You know, make it a little bit more worn down. You don't want to go for happy vibes here. I mean, this is a cemetery. You aren't going to go for anything crazy bombastic. Because, you know, this is resting place. Personally, Deep slate works very really well along with tough, iron bars, etc. Then, once you've reached 5 segments and put walls on top of them, it really helps. Then, you want to leave a small gap and then you'll want to go about one block into the ground. Right here, and then I'd change up the block palette, maybe some tough here. And then this middle area should maybe be 11 by 11 and the bottom should be something dark, like gravel, pale moss, the dead coral, anything that's a little desaturated. Personally, pale oak logs might actually work really well. Stone could technically work, although sometimes it's kind of hard to justify that. Huff is a really good block for this. Essentially, monotone things are the best you can do here, because, well, look, we're in the pale garden. Everything is meant to be monotone in the build. Try to avoid using color unless absolutely necessary or as a focal point. Since I'm taking this from a source material in order to build this cemetery, I made a few small adjustments by adding some plants here and moving these doors back a little. Of course, it's not 100% accurate if you know what I'm referring to, but anyways, it's time for the middle. You can see I go down two blocks here, and in order to have entrances, because over here are going to be a few small graveyards, then I just made these stairs. Now, I have a two block thick outline. In the middle, I have mycelium, but any grayish block will work. I just found mycelium would actually match the original's color the best. And now, what you want to do is make sure every side is equal, like this. And then we'll start with this side, but first we need walls, and also since this is down, you're going to have to build a staircase up behind this doorway I'm going to build. I know that's not 100% accurate, but oh well, this is Minecraft. So, pull out some tough. I'd say tough works best, rather than something like stone bricks or quartz, you know, because one, it's actually accessible, you can get enough of it for a giant structure, and two, kind of gloomy if you use it right. You can see how monotone everything is in this pale garden, which makes it work fantastically. Anyways, get yourself some stairs in order to make this entrance better. If you want to block it off, iron bars work really well for that. And now I have a little entrance here, then I can do some tough up here. And since there's going to be a walkway in this position later, I can put some iron bars as a railing although that comes significantly later. Anyways, you want to have some pillars surrounding this area, like here and here, just so it's a little bit of extra detail. And for this courtyard here, I'd recommend adding something, maybe a large tomb, a tree, etc. As long as it's a focal point for the build, it can be just about any color as long as it doesn't detract from the vibe. Personally, I'm probably going to put a large tombstone. Right here, you can see I have a large oak, except I replace all the blocks with pale. I also have a little hole there, you know, just a nice touch. And then, you can see how I started decorating the surrounding area. Take a pause if you need to look at what I'm doing, but essentially, you want to have three entrances, and the middle one should be largest. You can see railings on either side, 
with walkways of chiseled stone bricks, although you might want to do this in a different order. A little hole here, just a reference to the source material. And what you want to do is go down, and you can have entrances on either side. This side, though, was cut off by the staircase, so I filled it in. Essentially, you can go in the middle, three redstone torches, and then you can go back up, and now you have an actual piece of the cemetery you can start decorating. Also, I have this piece here, a little bit of another tree area. You can bone meal a cherry sapling, and then replace everything with pale. Personally, I'd say, for some of the areas, your best bet is to place down a large oak, as in, do bone meal on an oak sapling and just hope you get something big like this. You don't need it to be that large, but still, I think it looks best, especially since pale trees are 2 by 2s and don't fit nicely into everything. Anyways, you just want to have some walls around here, define where you want it to end, or even if you want to have a defined border for this place. Right here, you can see my cherry tree. It's uh, not cherry anymore. And you can also see I have this small area here. This is really just a reference to the original game where there is a secret. Essentially, what you want to do now is have your entrance here. Pay attention to the inside. And then you want to snake around to an area over here. And this area should be walled in similar to this, but it should only have one entrance and it should be a bit taller. That way, we can add staircases later. Of course, while I'm going to try to be faithful to the original game for inspiration, well, I can't do it 100% of the time, whether it be size constraints or really just because it didn't make sense. Hence, this area here will not be flooded. Now, for this, a few walls, maybe about 6-7 blocks high, and this area right here, I'd recommend leaving bare. Since there's going to be several other buildings in the area, some of them might end up going off this base plate I built. Well, you don't want to be building gravestones, only to have them overrun by a giant building. So beware of that. Just build your walls, and then you'll be ready for our next part. Right here, you can see how I have this little wall here. I cut a hole in it, so that way you can access this part of the cemetery. And I have a little staircase here. But most importantly, I have this part of the building, which is surprisingly almost completely accurate. This part right here is inaccurate, literally just because, wow, the in-game geometry is not the best on this part. But anyways, you can see how I have these nicely decorated walls, and how it's haphazardly placed with the different layers. And what you want to do here is turn it into maybe a little bit of a ceremony area, perhaps a stage. The only thing you need to do in terms of building is make sure that there is a door here. Maybe right about here. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. I mean, hypothetically, you could go fancy like every other door in this place. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Right here, that's all you actually need. Just make sure it's a walkable area. And what do you know? Staircase ready. Make this a ceremony area. Use a few stairs to look like seats. And what do you know, you have a nice accurate area. Hypothetically, you could do the same thing for the next room, which is probably a lot better suited for it. So, it's up to you whether you want to actually turn it into that kind of area, or turn it into something completely different. Right here, you can see I have this wall of signs saying, you know, something is dead. I'm not going to say what, you can put in whatever you want there. Whether it be actual names, or jokes, things like that. You can even put humor if you want. But anyways, you can have a staircase going up, and then this will go to the next room. And this one is quite a bit larger, actually, but has the same width. But basically, you can use some polished diorite, which is ironically close to the real colors of what I'm doing. And then, make sure you still have this foundation going on. If you don't have that, then it's going to look weird. I mean, this part of the level that I'm basing it off of kind of looks unfinished from the outside because you're not meant to see it. But anyways, make sure that it has a presentable outside. And then you can go up a few blocks or something like that. And then you can start building your next room, which will be elevated off the ground. And more to this, it's going to probably be four blocks, I'd say. So get a lot of tough bricks ready. Right here. You can see this base plate is now roughly complete. 
And now what I need to do is segment it. You can see I have these chains going down. If you want, you can change them to be going across instead. It's up to you on this one. And then do some unique designs, have some pale oak leaves. Make sure to put pale moss under it because that just looks better. And then continue this design across. Don't worry about the roof for now. Don't forget about this area though, because well, it's really easy to forget. Once you do this side, then you can mirror it onto the other side and it will be pretty easy to do that most likely. From here, you can turn this into a ceremony hall or whatever you want. Right here, you can see this foundation is nice and complete, got the pale leaves and such, and of course it's symmetrical. I have the chains and part of the roof ready. And this might be an oddly shaped roof, but hey, the source material and what it says. Since I don't have super complex mosaics, I decided to go with tinted glass, which means it'll probably be a little dark in here. Luckily, this is a ceremony room, where I can actually put lanterns without it looking out of place. Essentially, this area should have lots of rows of seating, pews, etc., and then an area in the front. Potentially make room for some sort of grave, tomb, coffin, etc. Somewhere where you can reasonably hold a ceremony for a funeral. I mean, it's kind of macabre, but uh, this is a cemetery tutorial. Essentially, you can set it up how you want. You can use imagery, symbols, etc. Whether you want it to be religious or secular is up to you. So I recommend just building what you'd think it would look like if there is a funeral being held here. Yeah, a little dark, but well, it is in fact the cemetery tutorial. Well. For that, you also need the roof, you can see pretty simple, I have the tuff going across, the stairs, you can have these stairs here, but they look awkward on the outside, so you might not want to do that, but otherwise, this is roughly what it would look like, and personally, I'd say it looks pretty good right now. You could do stuff like this in order to make some minor changes, otherwise, just make sure it looks good and roughly follows this design. Right here, you can not see the inside because it's too dark, but enabling night vision, you can see it's an area for a ceremony. A very small coffin with some candles for lighting because since this is already meant to be a dark build, you can play around with the lighting more. Of course, flowers, some rows of pews, and then an area up here. You can put books on these lecterns if you want. And you can see, copied the roof onto the outside, and this is what it looks like. Along with that, I made the tree accurate to its real colors from the game. For this, here's what it looks like during the day without night vision. Nothing too complicated. You can see it's still intentionally really dark in here, but still, it's a nice area nonetheless. Well, not nice, but well built, as long as you make sure to remember these details here. But now what you want to do is, since it goes back here, Create a pathway through the cemetery. Doesn't have to be formal pathway, maybe just some dirt, coarse dirt, etc. And you want to go up onto these stairs, so that way we can go to the second half. Where you loop around like this, make sure to note how I'm doing it with these walls. And then we go here, and then we can end up to the next part of this build. With this hallway done, there's something else you should probably do, and that's the central building. And, well, average building tutorials be like, yeah, I did the entire thing. However, the reason why is, one, because going through every single detail would take a long time, and two, this part I highly recommend just copying. Essentially, you want a little piece here, big piece, little piece, and then you need these two pillars, and these little pieces should go one block out compared to these. And you can see how they line up. And then I took some creative liberties and added some windows and extra designs. You can put symbols up here if you want. Then, once you have all that, you can see how I've segmented it. And then, going to the back, I mirrored it. And then added some basic foundation. Nothing super interesting, but it makes a really nice building. Whether you want to give it a full interior, a partial interior, or no interior is up to you. However, if you want to go full interior, be warned, it is quite large inside. 
if you need an area for those little boxes where you store things, then I recommend sideways furnaces and put them in another structure if you can, preferably an indoor structure, which I'm going to have one right here at the end of the tutorial. And then for this walkway here, make sure that it goes down pretty quickly. As much as I'd like to keep it elevated like the source material, simply that's unrealistic. So down it goes. And when it does this, make sure you don't intersect with this pathway here. If that's unwalkable, you're going to have issues. From here, make it curve out the way I'm running, and then make a giant walled in area. Nothing too interesting. All you need to do is copy something like this or this, something pretty open that you can walk through. If you're going to do the source material, say you've played the game where this is from, then a staircase upward and then a tall foundation kind of like what you have here will also work. Because you're going to have multiple structures this way, it can be pretty difficult if it's higher up. Right here, you can see I have a bunch of stairs. These are little cremation storage areas. And then you can see I have some pale trees up here, just as an extra detail. You can see I decorated it a lot of the outside. I recommend adding plants at the bottom like I did for everything else, but I don't think I need to go over that every single time I build a foundation now. If you have any spare areas, maybe a little bench with a little plant growing. You know, I mean, not good to have only doom and gloom. Sometimes you need a little bit of happiness here and there. And then, from here, I recommend making a tunnel. Something like this, alternating between polished brick, polished brick, polished brick, according to what you have going on here. And this doesn't have to be anything crazy. I don't recommend making it anything crazy. All you need to do is make sure that it goes roughly about here. Should be slightly behind your tree once you're done. And then, once you have that, you'll be ready for the final major room, assuming you skip this room in the middle. Right here, you can see I have this foundation. It's a little bit complicated, but once you see the interior, it will make a little bit more sense. Also, this tunnel's done. And right here, you can see octagon. Yeah, this room can be a little weird to build, but trust me, it can be done really well. While I have nothing for the interior for this, and it's probably fine, I mean, look at how many things you already have built. Well, right here, you just have a room. Make the center area a little bit lower down though, because that provides some depth to the room and makes it more interesting. You can put another tree here if you want. Then, with these octagonally shaped walls, then you'll have thick walls, because simply that's what the shape demands. This can make a really interesting situation where you can have that tinted glass again, and you can also have a walkway next to it, which allows you to build staircases into here and a whole bunch of other things. On the corners, this effect is a little bit too much, so I'm adding stairs to make sure the walls aren't excessively thick on the very corners. Essentially, fill it up as you do normally, and then you have some generic walls over there to base your inspiration off of for the rest of this. Then make sure that these walls, if they're not showing, you don't have to complete them, but sa better safe than sorry. So might as well build some of them before you accidentally have an unfinished piece while you're presenting it. And what do you know, you'll be able to build this room pretty easily. Right here, you can see the majority of this building is done. I ended up not decorating the walls, and it still turns out quite good. If you want, you can still decorate them pretty generically, something like this. You know, now that I'm doing it, I think I should go through and start doing that. But anyways, with this now in place, it's time for the dome. And the dome is a little weird, because first off, we're on an octagon, not a sphere. And this really makes it really weird, because normally you'd use a sphere generator because, you know, a circular base. But we have an octagon. And there's another thing, I'm basing this off of a level from another game, which already can't really handle spheres that well. So, what better th to do than actually make some sort of weird dome shape myself? Something like this, where I completely disregard the corners for now. Then I go up, more blocks like this 
And then in the very middle, you need to include another weird tough piece, the same shape that's on the bottom too. And when you do this on all four sides, then you'll have this weird dome shape. And from there, you can start approximating where the blocks should go on these corner pieces. If need be, you can make it two blocks thick, although I don't think that's necessary, but who knows, different things for different people. Right here, you can see that this roof is complete, all the tinted glass now in place, even if it's not a perfect sphere, it's more accurate and it works surprisingly well. From afar, it just looks like a building. Hypothetically, you could make this segment taller, but I think it's good where it's at. If you want, you can make a chandelier hang from it too. And now, it's time for the finishing touches. We need to do this area here, and this area is up to you on what you want to do. You can do large pillars in this place. I mean, there's a lot of potential already. You have a giant room. And of course, you also have this entrance. Perhaps I'll reserve it for another tutorial. But anyways, it's time to do a little bit of a staircase going downward from here. So down a few blocks, go like this, and then you can have both sides open. So a little way to access the outside here, and then there's going to be a building right here. And then that building should be able to link up to this entrance here, finally coming full circle on this whole build. For this building, you can use a lot of the same designs you used on all the other buildings, but I'm going to be honest, you don't have to do anything crazy. Simple, tough blocks will work. Right here, you can see I have a little bit of a trench of water running through here, and then right here I have a pond, along with a little section here. And with all this, well, this build is basically done when it comes to the structure itself. Yeah, I can't just say it's done here, because out of this whole tutorial, not once have I actually built a gravestone, and that is completely intentional. Because I'm basing it off of Ultra Kill 7 3, well, I didn't want any of y'all to start building tombstones and then promptly get them crushed by buildings. Now, with all this done, of course with a lot of creative liberties, in this room, I filled it up with sideways redstone components to make it look like little boxes. Well, yeah, this structure is done, and now it's time to move on to the graves. And there are a couple of designs. First off, we have the generic stone unmarked grave. I'm not going to mark any of these. I mean, this is a bit more somber of a cemetery. I've built one before with more funny jokes, like, I'll be back, or and stuff like that. You know, no crispy bacons here. So something like this can work. Maybe a little bit smaller right next to it. Don't line them up directly in a line. That's kind of boring. When you do it like this, then it makes it a lot more believable. You can even have some of them be damaged like that. And then in front of them, you use some coarse dirt, not soul sand. Coarse dirt, and specifically coarse dirt. Maybe rooted dirt if you want. But stuff like this makes it actually look like a real grave. Scatter these around. And then there's another trick you can do. Although this one might be reserved for more cartoonish ones, since grave digging usually leaves very little evidence because you know you kind of want to cover that up. So something like this, where you have six lecterns, and now it looks like an open coffin, as if someone went in there and stole something. You know, whether you need a monster, zombie, etc., any reason you'd ever need to open up a coffin again. Oh, there you have it. You can scatter that around, or using a combination of various stones, of course more than just the ones I'm presenting here, you can make more complex shapes, such as this, maybe like an angel or something, or something less decipherable like that. I don't know, there's a lot of different things you can do for various headstones. I recommend experimenting. Then, you can start making your pads, and pads can be done with forest dirt, and dirt paths, so like actually getting out a shovel, not just replacing random blocks like this. And then it will look like someone has actually gone through here. After that step, then what you want to do is start bone mealing the area, like this. Since you're adding bone meal, I mean, let's be honest, how often do you get lawn guys to come over here? I mean, maybe for some more modern cemeteries, probably pretty often, but let's be honest. 
This looks a lot more overgrown and cemetery-like. Get rid of some of the tall grass, get rid of eye blossoms or any other flowers unless you need it for the vibe. And then I have that part. And finally, once you have your tombstones and your foliage in, start planting some trees. Something like this. Don't bother trying to build that tree repeatedly or anything like that. Speaking of which, minor changes I made to it. You can add a torch to the back if need be, or hide some shroom lights to make sure it's nice and lit up. And then, finally, you'll be able to have a completed cemetery. With the graves now in place, you can see, well, it's pretty much done. And, quick look around, it's pretty dark though, so you'll probably need night vision if you're going around here. I don't recommend adding lighting because it messes with the vibe. I mean, you expect to go to a cemetery at night and see everything lit up by conveniently placed lanterns. So anyways, enabling night vision, and you can see it's, well, a cemetery. Nothing much more to say. I made sure to make this entrance path a bit crumbled so that way it wasn't a flat edge. I had to change it due to something I didn't like about it. But anyways, these paths, the graves, one of them's crumbled. But they're not even marked, but they still add a lot. And sometimes just the shape of them can say a lot. So be sure to add some variety to that too. And going around, added some flowers to some of them. There was a hole in my pale forest that included a dark oak forest. So I built a grave over it to make the grass a little bit greener under it. Just a little detail in case you're able to. Otherwise, while it's a giant tutorial and can be really hard to do, so there's several purposes from it. It can be a cemetery if you need a giant one, and if you're doing an ultra kill recreation, what do you know? You have a pretty faithful adaptation of 7.3 that works really well as both an actual build and with a few minor tweaks, the actual level. So, you know, if you are the guy developing the ultra kill mod in Minecraft, hey, this is probably pretty useful for you. Anyways, it even comes with this room that you can decorate if you need more to the cemetery. Although it's unlikely considering the already present giant size of this. But if you're looking for something spooky, you know, that's actually really late on Halloween. Well, this is the tutorial for you. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.